Welcome to Liberty Explained, your guide to libertarianism. And our goal is to share libertarian solutions for the future with you. Visit libertyexplained.com to subscribe to this podcast and to search our library of issues and book recommendations, along with a lot of great other resources. My co-hosts are Julia Geyer and Levy Rainey. And today we're answering the question of what is liberty? I figured, you know, the first like major episode, if you're going to answer questions from a hundred different libertarians of the We Are Libertarians audience, you ought to start with what is liberty? So it seems plain, clear, uh, a clear starting point. So essentially liberty is the freedom to choose or not to choose, to do or not do a thing. Like uh, it's, it's a, it feels like a very complicated topic, but we're going to try and break this down in this episode. And so Liberty is the freedom to do a thing without interference from the outside, from outside forces. So I want to do something and, you know, Levy and Julia can't gather together and go, we're going to stop him from wearing blue checkered shirts with the, with the point of a gun. That's an outside force that is coming in and violating my free will. So the less outside interference in the decision that we're making, the freer we actually are. And the most common form of interference is the threat of violence or force if the wrong choice is made. And liberty is often associated with the idea of free will, which is defined by Wikipedia as the ability to choose between different possible courses of action unimpeded. Now, we're going to leave. I have a question. Yes. Um, so what is the difference here in liberty and freedom? Okay. Are they the same thing or are they different? Very similar. But different, and then there's, this one, Chris? then there's autonomy that jumps in there. So, why don't you, Julia? Why don't you explain exactly what freedom is? Well, so the difference between freedom and liberty is they're they're usually considered synonyms that mean the same thing, but they do have like slightly different definitions. So, um, freedom is generally um, having the ability to act or change without constraint. So in philosophical discourse, freedom is discussed in the context of free will and self-determination balanced by moral responsibility. Um, right. And then liberty. So broadly speaking, liberty is the ability to do as one pleases. Uh, it's a synonym, a synonym for the word freedom. Um, in modern politics, liberty is the state of being free within society from oppressive restrictions imposed by authority on one's way of life, behavior, or political views. Um, sometimes liberty is differentiated from freedom by using the word freedom primarily, if not exclusively, to mean the ability to do as one wills and what one has the power to do. And using the word liberty to mean the absence of arbitrary restraints, taking into account the rights of all involved. So let me pause there, Julia, because yeah. liberty and freedom, so freedom, Levy, is the broader notion of freedom versus that outside force blocking you. Liberty is more about what more responsibilities do you have to others? Now, there's many different definitions between all these different things. That's kind of the one that we're going with. You know, what what moral responsibility do you have for others? So you have the freedom to do something, but the liberty from something else. So it's more, uh, I, that's a very esoteric thing. Hopefully that makes some sense. Does freedom follow liberty? Like you're given liberty, therefore you have more freedom? More like freedom follow. So you have freedom and then liberty springs from that based. So yeah. liberty, liberty is almost the measurement of how much outside force there is, whereas freedom okay. is just the pure state. Yeah. Okay. That's well put. So Julia, tell us more about like the term liberty. Um. So... The exercise of liberty is to is is subject to capability and limited by the rights of others. So liberty entails the responsible use of freedom under the rule of law, without depriving anyone else of their freedom. So, um, 
it's freedom is more broad in that it it like it represents a total lack of restraint or the unrestrained ability to fulfill one's desires. For example, a person can have the freedom to murder, but not have the liberty to murder as mm, the latter example okay. deprives others of their right not to be harmed. So um, liberty can be taken away as a form of punishment. Um, in many countries, people can be deprived of their liberty if they are convicted of criminal acts. Yeah, so that that murder example, and that's really where libertarians, like a lot of times people go, you're all anarchists. Like, no, you don't have the right to harm people, to take their stuff, no. to, to lie to them and defraud them in a contract situation. So you have the freedom to kill whomever you want. There isn't anybody standing over your shoulder if your your let's say your brother makes you mad, as he might often do. You don't have you have the freedom to kill him, but you don't have you you can have your liberty taken away if you if you perpetrate that act because you're taking away his freedom uh, to to live essentially. Does that clarify it at all? Yeah, yeah, that helps a lot. So Julia, there's also the the concept of autonomy. Libertarians awesome also uh, mention this word a lot. So we wanted to define that word. What exactly is autonomy? Um, autonomy is the quality or state of being self-governing. Um, it is self-directing freedom and especially moral independence. And um, it's also a self-governing state. All right. So it's a lot of philosophy. So yeah. what, is it, what does it actually mean? Mm -hmm. Liberty and freedom are the goal for libertarians, uh, along with self-autonomy, self-government, essentially. Individuals should be able to govern themselves because the individual knows how to plan their life in coordination with other people better than one person could govern another, right? So I know what's best for me, and even though Levy and Julia are my friends, they may not. they may have opinions on what's best for me, but they may not know all the ins and outs of what goes on in my head, for instance. So yeah. currently, the governments that we live under, regardless of where you're at, limit our ability to truly be free. Yeah, I think this um, definition or the word autonomy really speaks to someone's self-interest. Do you agree, Chris? Yes, exactly. Yeah, and that's a big thing in libertarianism. So um, like, like Chris was saying, no one can determine your self-interest better than you because they're not you. It's your self-interest. So it's, it's, it is very individual based. Yeah. You know, all the factors inside your head. And so even if I were, you know, e even if uh, I text messaged you my journal at the end of the day, you still don't know all the factors of what go into my daily life. Right. And so why would I want to turn over decision-making power to you let alone, let's say we form a committee, then you've added four other perspectives or 50 other perspectives, let alone outsourcing autonomy to Washington, D.C. and allowing those people. You know how to uh, govern your life and be autonomous better than anybody else. Now, yeah. this doesn't mean that anybody can do what they want, right? This is the, the common tactic to beat up on libertarianism without government, without the ability to take away your liberty, without the ability to constrain you through these things, you'll just do whatever you want. You'll treat other people however you want. And that's really a scare tactic because, Julia, it doesn't mean that you can do whatever you want. Mm -mm. It doesn't. Um, there still will be laws and consequences in a truly free society. Like a free society doesn't mean like it's like a murderous shit show, you know, yeah. a free society Molly, means right? like, yeah, like you're free to do what you want as long as you're not hurting or negatively affecting other people. Um, so there will be laws and consequences in a free society. Um, the difference is that each person actively participates in the crafting of those rules. Murder, fraud, theft, and other crimes would still carry penalties as they violate the free will of others. Right. And so if you harm other people's property or their person, then you will face consequences. And so it doesn't mean that, you know, you in, in a libertarian society will not have rules. 
Right. It's that you will get to participate in the creation and decide what rules you want to participate under. You are going to advocate for or against certain things and how you relate to the group in your local community. And you have the ability to walk away, to leave, and, and to go to other areas, other localities that will allow you a better set of rules. And so um, people often say, well, that sounds utopian, but people really in America have the freedom. This is sort of how we live. The, the federal government is involved in a lot, especially in funding things, but you really have a lot of choice. I live in Indianapolis. Levy lives in southern Georgia in a rural area. I live in a suburban area. Julia lives in a, an urban area on the East Coast. We live in very different rules and levels of autonomy and freedom in America. And so when people say, oh, this is not a free country anymore, it's not necessarily true. You, you get to actively participate in the choice of where you want to live. We're saying, let's do more of that because giving more of the autonomy to people and individuals is uh, is great. So Levy, does that kind of help clarify things somewhat? Yes, but I still have a question mm -hmm. because, and this is maybe a strange analogy, but you go to a grocery store, you're not required to put your sharp, your shopping carts up in mm -hmm. like the, in the shopping cart holder. There are still people who ramp them up into the bushes and like, that is a small, I, in my brain, like, that's a small example of people having to act in their best self-interest. They're not going to be penalized for not putting their shopping cart up, but people, there's still people who don't do that. So what do you do for those people? Because if, does everyone care enough to act in their best interest and the best interests of those surrounding them? I feel like there are people who just don't care because they haven't had to suffer the consequences of these actions, you know? So what do you do with those people? There will always be what I would call a bad actor, not Julia, but a bad actor in terms of uh, a free society because the shopping cart analogy that you use, you use is great. You suffer no penalty for putting your cart in the corral or leaving it next to your car, as I often do. Or, sorry. I but always do. <laughs> yeah. I'm creating jobs, oh. Levy. Okay. They, what they, I say? They well, have, you're welcome, cart boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Thank you, cart <laughs> monkey. But oh the uh, but the reality is you suffer no real consequences. Now let's say the 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 property owner, let's say Target, goes, we're spending too much money on collecting carts because of these bad actors. How can we fix the problem? Well, they hire a security guard to stand out and go, hey, put the cart back. Well, that slight social pressure from a private organization will probably make you, if, if people are watching you and you know they're watching you, you'll put the cart back. I know I will because I don't want to look bad. I'm vain. And so the uh, the reality is that will that subtle behavior. But let's say they take it to an extreme. If you don't put your cart back, they walk up and put a gun to your head and they go, I'm going to kill you if you don't put this cart back. Are you going back to Target or are you going to go to Walmart instead? I'm going to Walmart or growing my own groceries. That's exactly right. And so, but what the government does is it puts the gun to your head and you've got nowhere else to go. And so it, it's saying you have, you will put your cart back or else you will suffer consequences in jailing, fining you, or even taking your life, uh, you know, in something as simple as a traffic stop, many people lose their lives for a minor traffic infraction and they get the death penalty from the state. And so, Yes, you will. It, it, under the current system where we do have a lot of laws, you do have those people who don't act, quote unquote, correctly. They don't act in the best interest of the community. And it doesn't matter how many laws you create, you cannot perfect people. You have to create a system of organization that works within that imperfection and that that allows people to you, you, you create more of those bad actors when you try to prohibit things or you overdo the laws. Look at the. Look at the mask mandate, for instance, as governments have instead of instead of persuading people that wearing masks is in their interest, we mandated it. We told them they had to do this or else they have no other choice. Well, that creates resentment. That creates backlash. And persuasion always is a better way of getting people to act correctly mm -hmm. than coercion, which is the which is force. And so yeah. what, what libertarians believe is that you will have laws, you will have systems of dealing with the people who break the laws quote unquote right there will always need to be some mechanism for locking up a murderer a rapist a thief like they those people don't get to just walk the streets and do to others whatever they want they will suffer consequences it's that 
the resources will be focused on them instead of the resources being focused on Medicare and education funding and food stamps and mask laws and, and retention programs and, and the millions of other things that the federal, yeah. state, local the governments do. We're saying laws exist and people should participate in the creation of said laws that govern them directly. It's a form of localism that we really advocate. So it's not, you, you don't have a problem with laws or rules if who is like um, emphasizing those laws and rules and, and who's putting those into place. So it's That's like you're right. fine with Target implementing that rule, but you're not okay with the government stepping in and implementing that rule. It, it's it's a level of degree, right? It's it's that's exactly right. And so, the property owner can can do with what they like on their property, but they have a much wealth in the private system disappears a lot quicker than it does in the pu in the public system. And so, if if people are incentivized to act correctly, Target is going to use a polite form of persuasion to get mm -hmm. you to put your cart back instead of using force right. because they know. If I o overstep my bounds, they're going to just walk away. And people in that situation will peacefully walk away. But if you look at the situation with policing in America, for instance, people don't feel the ability to change their police departments. And so people turn to violent means to make their the change necessary because the public system is too slow to change. Whereas in a private system, you could just fire that police department and hire one that advocates for... Mm -hmm de-escalation as opposed to the use of aggressive force. Okay, that makes Basically, a lot more sense. like, force just... Force it goes against human nature um, in a way because most humans want to do things that are in their self-interest. So if you give someone an incentive that serves their self-interest, they're going to do it. If you force them, it gets messy. <laughs> Always. Basically. Okay. Hence... Julia being radicalized and, and committing jihad on this podcast because of, <laughs> of her, her COVID. So, all right, well, hopefully that answers a little bit more about liberty. We are out of time, and we uh, we thank uh, thank you both to Julia and Levy for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And we thank everybody for listening, and please go check out the We Are Libertarians podcast, too, at wearelibertarians.com.